So it is um, 6.01. We do have a quorum, a um, couple of housekeeping items. So this is the meeting of the Halifax Finance Committee. It is being recorded by Area 58. The committee members in attendance are Cheryl Burke, Mike Bennett, Frank Johnston, Mike Rignetta, and myself. Uh, also, Caitlin Esposito as the secretary. Um, all votes will be done by roll call as this is a video call and the recording will later be available on Area 58 uh, and its Halifax channel. Okay, so uh, just to kind of kick us off, I want to say again, I appreciate everybody's flexibility this week for moving it a, a day or two in uh, and appreciate everybody jumping on on such short notice. So thank you very much. Um, and we'll just... Cody? Oh, you look like you were going to say something. That's all. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, so we'll just get right into the agenda items. So our first agenda item is the approval of the Finance Committee committee meeting minutes from the 18th. Um, they uh, were sent out, uh, I think, over the weekend for mm -hmm. everybody to have a chance to review them, if everyone's had a chance to read through them, uh, and if there are any desired ads, deletions, or changes that would like to be done. Look good to me, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. I have a motion to approve the minutes from 11 so, Oops. So much. Thank, Seven. You. Thank you, Cheryl. Roll call vote. Cheryl? Yes. Mike? Yes. Frank? Yes, for the minutes on 11 18 2024. Very good. Mike? Yes. Thank you, sir. And I'm a yes also. So those all in favor, and that will move, those minutes are approved. Okay, uh, on to the second item. So we were supposed to talk to uh, Steve, um, but because we missed the Monday meeting, um, he can't make it this evening because he had other things planned, obviously holidays and other items that he has that he wants to attend to. So we are going to pencil him in for January 6th at this point, um, which will be the first Monday back after the new year. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll have him in to kind of chat about some of the items on his uh, in his budget. Anybody have any questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. Good to go good. on that, Jim. Well, we'll just, I'm just going to keep chasing that until we get the answer <laughs> that we're looking for. That's really oh. all I can do. It's coming. It's coming. Yep. It was Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Christmas present. Closer yeah. than the meeting with Steve, actually. <laughs> Christmas is closer than the meeting with Steve. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, okay, so that's our second agenda item. On to our third, which is a review of the special town meeting articles. Um, we put this in. Frank, you had brought it up at the last meeting to have this uh, agenda item on here. Um, so uh, they, uh, I believe everybody should have received theirs in the mail. I know I downloaded and printed mine once it was yeah. public. Uh, and I did get mine in the mailbox, I think, Monday, Monday afternoon. Mm. So um, I ha I have one question, if uh, if you guys don't mind me starting. So, and it's not really on the MBETA articles. I think we've beaten that horse a number of times. <laughs> um, it's the it's the personal watercraft one I found a little bit curious. Now, that's obviously, you know, somebody collected some signatures and this is what they want to do. So the the only question that I have is, if I'm a resident and I own a house on the lake and I have a personal watercraft, I can't launch it from the back of my property? That's how it's written. Right? I think the, the way it's written, it says, shall only be launched from the two town-owned town -owned boat ramps. That makes no sense. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to think that they, they men the only public places where it should be launched are from right. the town of boat ramps. But, it, but again, that's, that's how it says. Mm. Um, yeah. I've, we've gotten a few questions on that and we'd have to at town meeting, hopefully the, um, the individual that presented this to, right. to us is there and able to answer that type of question. Yeah. Cause I just thought that was a little odd. And the only other thing I think on that from my, just my opinion is 
I think instead of saying that the whatever sticker they get needs to be displayed, it should be affixed to the device, not just displayed on it. Yeah. You know, because I could buy a sticker and move it from one boat to another, to another, to another. And as long as it's displayed, then I'm I'm following the rules. Mm -hmm. Just my thought. I'll open the floor for other questions. From a revenue standpoint to the town, I'll, I'll address this, I believe, probably to Cody. Um, <clears throat> what's the fee going to be set out on those watercraft on an annualized basis? You know, I'm not sure, Frank. Uh, I mean, to be frank with you, um, I I honestly don't know how we if this passes. I don't know how we enforce it. Right? We we, we don't have a police boat. Um, we don't have. I mean, you guys know we we don't have the financial flexibility within our budget to staff specific details, right, to enforce something like this at the ponds um that's kind of the biggest issue but then also there comes the concern of you know now you're talking about running a a, a program where you have to get stickers mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like a lot but you know they say out of the police department okay so again that there's a monetary value to that we have to purchase the stickers who's going to actually process these mm -hmm. you know my thought initially would be for us to put them on our online system. We have a great online system that we could put them on there um, and it require everyone to submit it on there, which helps to some extent, but then you still need someone to review those online, make mm -hmm. sure that you know they are a resident and then get those stickers out. Um, and then Mom. I'm not super familiar with watercraft registration, but how do you, how do you confirm if we give them a sticker, like Jim said to a, to put on their personal watercraft, um, how do we know it gets on to the one that they that's theirs, right? Okay. So if they request one as a resident, we we give it to them. Um, I guess if we got uh, their a copy of their registration, like we would do with a vehicle, you know, if, if we were to do it with a vehicle, I'd ask, okay, you need to submit a copy of your registration, and then your sticker number would correspond with your license plate. That's why that way there you can't switch it. Right. So we we probably have to look to do something like that with a watercraft. But again, now this is all, it's not just handing these things out. Someone is having to review these, make sure that they're a, uh, a resident of Halifax, reviewing the personal watercraft registration, and then assigning a sticker number, and then either letting people know these are available or mailing them out. Um, so it's, it, there's some concerns on our end. Um, if it does pass, but those are the two two biggest ones, just enforceability and then how we implement this without additional staffing. You know, the cost of the stickers, it's minimal. I mean, a couple, a dollar or two per sticker, but the, the, the time, depending on the volume of these could be, could be large and we don't have staffing. It would end up probably being overtime for existing mm -hmm. staffing, which again, that's, that's a big expense. Um, yeah, that's where it's kind of getting at Cody is, <clears throat> whatever fee is designed for the sticker needs to cover whatever group or department or no, I... to manage that because there is a lot to do with that at least initially get it set up and stuff you know um mm -hmm. as far as enforcement goes you're right you bring up a good point there but that bridge is to be crossed when the time comes i guess um yep. you know but as many complaints as we've had, as the town has yeah. had over the last couple of summers down at the lakes, you know, this is the start of get something down there to, it's the beginning of something to try to manage it, you know. Right. Yeah. All right. So we really don't know how we're going to, um, or how we're going to price the, cost of the, the the stickers then or the licensing agreement or whatever that may be no uh, no i we i can't yeah we haven't even begun to figure out what that would be and it just goes to like i i have no clue what volume we would even be talking about um so i the data is really hard for us to begin to project because we really don't have any data to start with. 
Right. So that makes it quite challenging, uh, at least initially. I, I, I don't know where we'd go with this one. If it passes, we'll we'll do everything we can to make it work. You know, the town meeting wants it to go through, but I, right. you know, I, I don't know. I don't know logistically how, how it would work. Um, and in even speak, uh, Chief Shabbos is on here, but in speaking with him, it, I just, He's, he's working on a proposal for um, enforcement, you know, what that cost would be, but it's it's not going to be cheap. Yeah, I would think that it, it may not, you know, may not even have a system in place for this yeah. by the time summer starts. I mean, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of moving parts. It's just a lot to consider. It's not yeah. a simple case. You know, so I, I, I wonder if it's even going to be ready for this year, which I'm sure that's what they're all hoping for. Is well, that this yeah, would be yeah. in place for the summer? It'd be nicer on the lake, which is great, but I don't. I don't think that we'd have enough time to do that. Yeah, um, since we're in budget season, we're going to want to. If it does approve in a couple of weeks, then we're going to know that some department's going to need to have funding available to them to operate this type of um, operation. Yeah. Operation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, in that the the biggest concern I see with that again, I think with our online system, we have some of the tools in place that it, it could work um, and it could work somewhat efficiently. But you, I think the way that this is written, um, the permit uh, is to be. I think it says something about the police department. It's supposed to issued be, by Halifax Police Department. Yeah, yeah. Issued issued by the Halifax Police Department. If that's what the bylaw says. We're supposed to follow the bylaw if it passes in this fashion, which means our police department has to be the one to issue it. And in, in who, right? So it, our, our police officers don't really have the time to be sitting desk duty to do these things. You know, we don't have a we don't have a desk officer. All of our patrolmen mm -hmm. are out in the fields patrolling. Right. Um, and you know, the administrative staff there is already kind of at their limits. We get like a hundred public records requests a week. So it's not something where I can just say, oh, okay, you know, you guys start taking this on, there'll be some costs associated with the stickers. Um, or it's even like, okay, ju just take this on and we'll have to pay this person a little bit more. You're looking at literally having to bring in staffing if the existing staffing isn't interested in overtime, which again, I, I don't even know how you do that. You find someone who maybe wants to work five hours a week while we permit it to, to uh, process these. It's, it just, again, in theory, I think it's it, it's uh, valuable, and I get where people are, their concerns are. Um, I just don't know if this is the best way for us to go about it from the town side and how we can effectively do this. Yeah. A couple of a couple of comments, if you'll indulge me for a second, and I have no horse in the race either way. I don't own a personal craft, and I don't live on the water. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking this out from the from the other side, thinking about this as we're talking, um, as a as a first step towards deterring outsiders from abusing the beach, the, the beach and the and the water, right? Because I I think that the people that are worried about this think it's outsiders that are coming into yeah. the two the two lakes, right, and, and using it in not a nice way. Yeah. That if they're and similar to our, I might be back and forth a bit so indulge me um similar to our trash stickers for the recycling bins recycling uh station right if i go to the recycle center and i ask for a sticker they don't put it on my car make sure what car i have is my car with my license plate and my registration they give me a sticker and i put it on my car and i can go back to the recycle center and do my business right and pay the fees and whatever right if the people on the pond are for this, thinking it will at least deter, if we, if we, never mind enforcement at this point, it will deter if we put signs up, maybe some signage. If you're out here without a sticker, you will be fined or could be fined. So if the thought is the deterrent to outsiders and there's a fee involved that people that live on the pond that have watercrafts, or people in town that want to have watercraft, personal watercrafts, want to use the pond, they would hopefully treat it with the care that we want them to as a town. And at least it might be a first step in deterring outsiders from showing up with their with their jet skis and causing havoc. So for whatever fee that would take, and I, I like the online system as well. I don't believe this should go through the police department at all. Uh, clearly they have better 
things and more important things to do than issue stickers for anything. Um, yeah. But if there's a way to do it through the online system that a person that lives in Halifax can obtain a sticker for their watercraft to go on the pond, and I believe it should be from their house or their public docks, personally, not the public docks. So if I live there, I wouldn't want to drive around the corner to launch my boat. Exactly. Then I don't think that some parts of this might not be valuable. If we can put some signage up that says, without a sticker, you will be, you could be fined. So maybe there's that deterrent and that helps. In the short term. And if there's a longer term uh, way to enforce it that makes sense financially, then that can be down the road. Just a thought. Yeah, but with a deterrent like that, it's not going to last long. I mean, people are going to realize that there's no enforcement and they'll just do it, what they do. Yeah. That, unless you enforce something, it's not going to carry any weight. Mm. True. One other thing to, to note, too, um, in speaking with legal counsel, you know, at its surface, the bylaw is legal. But there are a few, um, if approved, we have to submit it to the Division of Law Enforcement of the Department of Fisheries, Wildlife, and Environmental Law Enforcement. So basically the head of the Massachusetts Environmental Police, and then they would actually have to sign off on it, giving their okay. And then we also would need the okay from the Office of uh, Fishing and Boating Access because we have that public access boat ramp. Um, mm -hmm. and they would have to give the okay. And then also we would have to publish it uh, in a newspaper after it's approved. And, and if challenged, whoever put the, um, the article together would have to provide a rational basis for excluding non-resident personal watercraft that basically the attorney general would have to um, perceive as being conceivable for the grounds for the town to exclude non-residents. So the we've asked if we can submit it ahead of time to get an answer. We haven't heard back that they'll provide us with any um, determination. But I and, and I did let the the petitioners know that too that it's just because this passes the town meeting. There's a couple more steps that this would have to go through, and, and we don't know where that lands. Cody, could I and Jim? I um, it, it's EJ. I apologize. I I am present. I was about ten minutes late. I got mm -hmm. to on. Um, so for anything that I have missed, I apologize. Um, Cody, just a, sort of a, I guess, a, a, a process question for you. Some of these things that are being discussed right now, a lot of what you just said, as far as things maybe having to be submitted to the attorney general for their approval, um, shouldn't some of those things be flushed out before it's even voted on at town meeting? The state won't allow it. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to submit the approved bylaw, and that's when they'll actually act on it. So you, right. so you so you present the approved bylaw from the town, and if the attorney general's general's office um, decides to disallow anything on there, what's what's the course from there? Does it go have to go back to town meeting with revisions? Yeah. So if there were certain aspects of it that they just said, you know, this isn't allowed. The aspects that were allowable could could move forward, um, but yeah, if the if the if they came back and said, "Hey, we're not going to allow this at all," then it, it's something that could be brought back to town meeting um, for town meeting to determine in the future. It's we we re I did reach out to um, the, the fishing and boating access board and asked them if they could provide feedback. Um, and basically, and as far as the attorney general's review of these things. They basically tell you, work with your town council, who should be able to tell you if it's something that's legal, in which we did. You know, our town council said, we're confident that this is legal, but there are some hurdles that you have to submit once approved. And there's, they won't review it until it's been a approved article at a town meeting. Yeah, so it's, it's just the way it's, the way it's drawn out. The reason why I asked is because, because it seems like we're doing a lot of the... Um, I don't know. It just, it seems like it's, it's backwards from what I'm used to, I guess is, is my point where, where we're doing the feasibility, feasibility study after the approval comes in versus the other. But if that's just policy, that's just policy. I was curious. That's all. Part of it, EJ too, is this is a petitioned article. So it's not something that 
um, an official board or committee of the town is putting together where it's been vetted along the way. You know, um, council's been involved throughout the process. We've, yeah. we've tried to get as much feedback from state agencies. So with a petitioned article, however it's written, we have to put it on the mm -hmm. warrant. Mm -hmm. um, again, in, in essence of trying to make sure we're prepared at town meeting, I, tr I try to get as much feedback as far as if if it does pass, is it going to accomplish what the residents, you know, think that they're voting on? But it, it's, yeah, if the state doesn't want to give us that feedback, um, yeah. they don't have to until it's an approved mm -hmm. and then submitted to them formally. Yeah. yeah that, and that's the other reason why I asked the question as well, because there are portions of this that seem like they make it more difficult for the residents than in some, in some aspects of it, not all of it, but, um, but thanks for that. I appreciate the answer. Yeah, no problem. All right. Anybody have any other questions regarding the agenda articles? And I mean, for those who didn't follow the news, Kingston approved theirs in their special town. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Mm. We approved ours last night too. Mm. At the town meeting. Uh, who did, Bill? Holbrook, Holbrook approved theirs. Oh, they did. Unanimous vote, yeah. 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 I guess that what they were saying is it can be, whatever you put out now can be always be changed, added. It, as long as you're in compliance, you're not going to get sued, so. You say they voted unanimously? Yeah. Because of the, they felt they're being, well, the thing was they're being bullied by the state. Everyone knows that. Mm. But they rely on grants heavily, and they're afraid to lose all these grants because yeah. a lot of these grants go to Desi and stuff. So it's going to hurt the schools too. Yeah. So. Right. Well, it's up to the voters, you know. Yeah. At the end yeah. of the day, give them a product to uh, look at, you know, approve or disapprove, and they have the option to do that. And that's what the uh, bylaw committee did. Is yeah. Laid it out, and it's for them yeah. to say one way or the other, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. all right well if there are no other questions for this specific agenda item we will m close that out and move on to the next uh the next item would be the start uh discussing a, discussing a start date for the first in-person meetings um so i was thinking potentially the 20th of january which gives everybody kind of six weeks to and I get that into their into their diaries and make sure that, you know, nothing else is in the way uh, in order for them to do that. If anybody has, other, you know, again, it's just my it's just a suggestion. I'm certainly willing to do whatever the committee would like to do uh, other than that. But that's, that's, that's that was my thought. What was the date yeah. again? 20th, the January, 20th of January. That's uh, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, OK, so I guess <laughs> not that day. Scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, you had something? Or was that what you were going to say? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm down with that, Jim. All right. So... Uh, February 3rd. Sounds good. Yeah. That work for everybody? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Third is fine. Oh, I'm on the roads First again. Me, we'll be well into the budgets by then anyhow with yeah. the apartments, and so mm -hmm. that's going to actually work out pretty good. Yep. All right. February 3rd, 3rd it is. 2025. So we have to, uh, what are we going to hold them in the selectman meeting room? Uh, prob I would say, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. That's the one right next to your office, right, Cody? It is. Yeah, as long as there's availability, we'll um, we'll schedule it. We'll we'll get that done. And it depends too if it's it's going to be a hot topic and we expect a large crowd. We'll move it to the Great Hall. Right. But, uh, okay. So how do we just just procedurally? Does that something that Katie works with someone at Town Hall to reserve that room, or is that something we work with you? Yeah, no. Katie can send an email over to our town clerk's office. Okay. Um, and you can there's a um, uh, like a usage form, and mm -hmm. just she can put the dates in, 
and oh. they'll reserve the room for us. Cool. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So two, three. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, that'll be a close on that specific one. If no one has any objections, we will move on to the next one, uh, which would be committee liaison updates. Um, I haven't heard from either the town, other town, Plimpton or Kingston finance committee members or committee chairs regarding us kind of getting together and collaborating on the school, uh, the Silver Lake Regional School budget as of yet. Um, I shot them out another email, but I think holidays and other things, you know, I think everybody who's worked around this time of year knows that the next four weeks are dead weeks and nobody's really going to respond to kind of like anything until after the first. So if I get something back, uh, EJ, obviously I'll loop you in on that. Um, and, uh, you know, we can, we can work it together from, from that point. Okay. Um, that said, have we gotten, ha Kate, uh, Cody, have you heard anything from the schools? Are they ready for talking about budgets in January, um, you know, how's that kind of situated at this point? Uh, yes, so they will be ready in January. Their, their plan is to have a preliminary budget um, to all the school committees at their January meetings. So I anticipate we will get that, you know, soon, soon thereafter. Um, I previously had mentioned a joint meeting um of all the towns school committees and you know to discuss budget and the financial teams uh was scheduled for the 12th of december at the request of kingston and plimpton um that's been pushed to january 16th 16th i believe Kate, yeah, yeah. yeah so um and the reason for that is is i think plimpton and kingston were looking to have more of a um an idea of their financial picture for fiscal 26. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they, they had asked if we were okay with it in Halifax and in order to have a productive meeting, I think, you know, whatever, whatever works for them, as long as we're not pushing it too late, I want it to be as productive as possible. So it made sense. Yeah, it um, sense. So I'll remind everyone as we get closer, but just wanted to let you know that that's been changed. Yeah. And then um, Jim and EJ, we'll look to start meeting with them um, probably monthly, similar like we did last year, Jim. Okay. Um, we'll look to have you to have, have those meetings probably, um, in January and we'll meet with them. Obviously we'll have these public meetings, but behind the scenes to work through some of these things in January, February, March, and probably April as we, you know, finalize everything. Sure. Yeah. Certainly makes sense. Yep. Very good. Any other updates from the committee team? Okay. Very good. So we will close the liaison update agenda item moving to correspondent or as may arise. I don't have anything for this specific section. Um, so we're going to open it to the floor. Katie, you have your hand I up? Just, yeah, I just have a quick question. Do we have to take um, a vote for our recommendations on these articles? Good, good point, Katie. You, you don't have to. The, the finance committee doesn't have to. So basically you have three options, Jim. You guys can vote to recommend an article. You can vote to not recommend it, or you can say the finance committee didn't take any action. Right. Didn't take any action. So I was, um, so as part of next meeting planning, I was, we were, you know, going to, I was going to see if we wanted or, or ask to meet uh, 30 minutes before the special town meeting. Uh, so, like we did last year uh at the in the faculty lounge uh at six o'clock and i think at that point we should have we should have that will be the pointed discussion as to whether we recommend or not recommend these uh, articles okay sounds good yeah, yeah. it's kind sounds of good. at that point now good point katie thanks for bringing that up um, Anything else under anyone else? Correspondent as may arise. We have everybody here, full quorum. If anybody has anything you want to discuss with the committee. I I have a, a question that I, I, Cody, it's probably for you. Mm -hmm. It's definitely for you. Um, and it, it slipped my mind. I know it's come up before, but the, the traffic study down by Cumberland Farms, 
Um, what is that funded for this fiscal year? Traffic study done by Cumberland Farms. Did I not see something about a traffic study that, or, or, or does this have to do with Thorndike? Is that what I'm thinking about? You probably think uh, about Thorndike. They got a traffic. Yeah. Okay. It might have been Thorndike. Um, we did some traffic counts in that area recently, but we didn't do a full study. Um, there's a there was a study um, Pine Street. We did a study at that intersection, Pine Street intersection, that looked at um, traffic counts in there. But I don't think we've done it. The town hasn't done designated one for that intersection at, near Cumberland Farms. Okay. So, so what happens to the results of those, Cody? Do they go to just the highway department and percolate or what? So traffic counts, yeah, because there's typically a reason that we request a traffic count. Mm -hmm. um, so that would typically just go to the, that data would. The Pine Street um, uh, intersection study, we um, we had a presentation on before the selectmen, maybe going back a, probably a year, um, and there were some recommendations we had uh, one of the, well, the, the biggest recommendation was to do a engineering study, basically, um, of which the board approved some ARPA funding for. Um, mm -hmm. our, our highway department hasn't been able to identify an engineer to undertake that um, study. So we're, we're, we're trying to um, work with our highway department to to identify an engineer to take next steps. And then they've also, there's some recommendations that are um, a little bit, uh, they don't cost quite as much that, that we're looking to implement. So there's a uh, highway department's looking to put in a, like an island there. Um, the, mm -hmm. There was something as simple as lower the stop sign. They thought the stop sign was a little bit too high. So different things like that, but mm -hmm. usually they're, um, they're public and we, we um, will take the action that we can on those. As yeah. Is this sure. coming out of Pine Street onto 106? Yeah. Yeah, this, they had a big accident there, That's I think, a couple of months. They should, back, they should yeah. move the stop sign over to the left. It's way over to the right. You can't see it coming up. That's I think Chief thing. Shaw's might have something to add on it. I see Chief? It. Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to, um, I mean, in response to uh, uh, AJ's question, I believe the study that he's referring to was the um, – the uh, traffic um, study that uh, Old Colony put together. Um, oh, for the from, whole corridor? Uh, from the whole corridor and part yeah. of that, uh, part of their uh, planning for, uh, the, uh, you know, upgrade that um, 106 corridor from so from, from the, uh, you know, the country, country Club Boulevard all the way, to, you know, to, to the intersection and, um, and then from um, the uh, Cumberland Farms, you know, on 58 and then to uh, Lincoln Street. Uh, they placed counters there to see, and uh, and then we'll just have to wait to see what the um, that's in also in reference to uh, decreasing the um, speed limit there, um, as part of their study to 25 miles an hour through the corridor. So I think that that's what the the one that EJ was referring. Uh, thanks, Chief. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Chief. I I do think that sounds that sounds familiar. I I was curious as to whether or not it was going to include the the actual light cycles that are down there and i don't think that this is probably a conversation for the finance committee as a whole but um yeah, it's just it's it's just painful down there and there's yeah. there needs to be something that can be done for that um, so the, so the, steve did um they did install uh, new cameras at the intersection um that are gonna that are supposed to supposedly um gonna assist, help help that traffic through there um basically it's gonna um monitor the vehicles approaching an inter intersection and then uh communicate with with the, the the lights um you know further west to, to get those things moving along um it, which was a, the kind of the cheaper uh option than um to have the uh, pads um on the intersection itself which would mean you know ripping out the intersection placing the uh those um electronic pads those uh that work on the weight of the vehicles so that camera's in, in place um what it's difficult now is because stop and shop closing and that light being on on flash it kind of actually helps the traffic yeah. there you know but it's uh that intersection needs the major rebuilding and uh, i don't foresee it at being done anytime soon you know with the especially with the 
way the finances are and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was, I was actually, I went that way to the Hanson train station yesterday or the day before and there were five cars in front of me and I was at the Walmart set of lights and the Walmart set of lights turned red on me twice in mm -hmm. five, five cars length. And nobody was coming out of Walmart during that entire time or coming from the other, from the Cape Cod cafe plaza. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Right. So the light was just constantly changing red. There was no other activity in either direction. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. That, that needs to be, uh, I mean, it's been, a, been an ongoing issue. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll you know, be, uh, be addressed sometime down the, down the road. Yeah. But we'll see. Thanks, Chief. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Very good. Cool. Good stuff. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Comments? Oh. Queries? Save rounds? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll close out that item and move on to public participation. Any public participation uh, for the Finance Committee? Yeah, Jim, the only thing I, I, I want to add, I know I came in late on the conversation you guys had with the um, with the personal watercraft. Yes, and um, I think, um, you know, uh, you guys have a lot of great points, and I totally in, in agreement with what Cody mentioned about the uh, the, the issues down there. Um, I think if this article passes at town hall, I mean, at town meeting, which would, you know, it's a likelihood that it, that it will, uh, I don't think the... Uh, the state is going to uh, allow us to us to uh, restrict use to just residents only. I mean, the state's uh, you know mantra is to open up more access points for people to utilize recreational uh, facilities, not uh, restrict them. So, uh, especially with with fifty eight being uh, you know a boat ramp, a state boat ramp, we're going to be very hard pressed to to have. You know, I'm not even talking about the enforcement thing because that's a total different uh, subject matter. But just the, the uh, not the legality. Well, I guess the legalities because, like, like Cody says, le it meets the legal requirements. The, the article itself, the way it's written, but this, the other two agencies or three agencies that are going to be involved, um, are going to see this as a as very restrictive for people to, to using, you know, public facilities. And I, I, I think they're going to shut it down. That's just my opinion. No, it certainly sounds like they will, if they're going to start denying without some type of rational basis. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the feedback and the information chief. It's good stuff. Jim, Mike, very welcome. Yeah. Just on the, on the back end of that, then is it with us? I know we'll talk about our recommendations one way or the other on that, the night of the meeting earlier, which is great. The kind of consideration that we take into, like, what if this passes, what the expense is for us to deal with it after the fact, once it passes, as to our recommendation. Like, if we have a feeling this won't pass because of the state regulations, which I, I believe as well, yeah, sure. do we think about that as far as how we recommend it or don't when it comes to that point, based on what the future cost could be for us to try to make this work based on the way it's written? Well, that's well, you know. Go ahead. Well, I, I mean, I mean, I think I think I think Cody might might have mentioned it that when when I came in, um, you know, we are going to have a, a a proposal at uh, the uh, May town meeting to kind of educate the, the residents on what it would cost for us to have a, bo a boat on the water uh, for two or th two months or, or 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 you know or, or three months and uh, enforce the the, the, the boating laws. You know, not just for well, for the personal watercraft and also the the other um, you know usages of of, of the uh, the lakes. Uh, we're talking about you know overtime on on weekends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. it's it just and, and you know it, it, it's hard to, to to justify that cost when all these all the departments are being asked to, to cut you know provide a ten percent budget cut. You know, so but I mean I'll, we'll present it to the town and. Uh, and then let the voters decide. I mean, I mean, there's no way we're going to be able to to, to work through without a, you know, an override or or, or some much deeper cuts. That uh, and I think for, you know, the 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 use of 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 the the ponds, you know, or the lakes for two month period, 
uh, it's you know it's difficult to, difficult to justify in my opinion. Right. Yep. 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 Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. So I think I just I think the 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 net of that, Mike, is once you know there's really not much we can do until it passes because you know the level of effort it would take to evaluate that and do any kind of reasonable assessment, you know, in advance of it not passing would be kind of, you know, kind of moot at that point. So we'd probably have to dive into that if it does pass. And then it has to, then it has to go through the process that, that Cody's already mentioned. And then on top of that, if it gets kicked back, you know, the petitioner could create amendments that would, you know, kind of, you know, would have to go back through the process again. So, you know, it's, I'm sure it's, uh, I'm sure it's an elongated process as most mm -hmm. things politically are. Um, <laughs> yep. So I don't, you know, that's something we'll have to deal with if it does pass. Yeah, no, my only concern, not comment, I, I thought was the, the cost of us, if we were to recommend it. Yeah. The cost from mm -hmm. recommending it and it passing in town to getting it to the next levels to get approved. Never mind if it got approved. That whole part, I understand the expense is great. But do we, in our recommendation, do we take into account what it would cost if we recommend it and they vote yes? Yeah. What it costs to get to the state levels to, right. there must be some expense to our town, right? To get it to that level. Right. We would have to put that. Present it and all that kind of stuff, right? So mm -hmm. that I would think would be enough for us to consider. I, I'll, I'll try to put something together, Mike, um, some sort of estimate. I, I don't know how accurate it's going to be, but with well, the time, I, yeah. I can. Just with the data that. that I can pull together, I will try to get you a best estimate yes. yeah, of what sure. that what it, what I anticipate it could cost us. Yeah, and I think what what Chief just said, as far as you know, you're yeah, you're asking other departments to make a ten percent budget cut across the board, right? Going into this, it, it's obvious given what we know about the proposal already that there are going to be significant costs associated with it. Mm -hmm. So whatever those costs are, reg regardless of how big or small they are. They're, they're going to be a, an increase on the budget, right? right. And cool. from from where we sit, Mike, to, to your point, how do we make that? We At least for me personally, I can't make that recommendation that we that we pass it for that reason alone mm -hmm. because we know what we're up against this coming year from a fiscal standpoint. So it's it's not responsible for us to take on the ad, added burden because we we know that's and Cody, this is what I was going to with my feasibility question, because if we could have all of those answers up front, it would make it a lot easier to to talk through this. Mm -hmm. um, but because there's so many variables, it's for me, it's a no brainer that um, uh, at this point in time, we can't do it. I, I will note, too, that um, Chief Shavs and I have talked about this at great length. Um, and you know our goal over the next couple of months is to develop a, a plan kind of for the beach and, and the ponds again with the resources that we have i, I think um, our thoughts are if, if we just get a little more involved and come up with a plan and some signage and so on and so forth it's mm -hmm. certainly not going to mitigate all of the um, concerns that we heard from our residents over the this past summer but I do think with just appropriate management, it it should greatly help those things. And I did let the petitioners know that as well. That that you know we we're, we're looking to take a more a little more of an active approach. Um, you know, the particularly Chief Shavs and Deputy Chief Benner um, and myself as much as I can so, to support to try to come up with a plan. Um, and so Deputy Chief Benner and Chief Shavs are working on um, putting something together now. All right. All good stuff. Great questions and appreciate the feedback from everybody. Um, so if no one has anything else in the public participation section, we will close that item out and move on to next meeting planning. Um, again, as I said earlier, I think uh, so I'm looking at the 16th, uh, 30 minutes prior to the special town meeting. We'll meet at the elementary school uh, in the faculty lounge, as we did before. We'll discuss and um recommend not recommend or just take no action on the town meeting articles uh that way we're prepared when we go into the meeting itself as to where we stand as a committee good sounds good sound good to everybody yeah sounds good yes indeed yep
All righty. Uh, with that, if there are no further comments or questions, uh, we one, can... One thing, Jim. Sir. So budgets are due um, next week, next Friday. So with that, uh, I was hoping each of you could send me um, a couple blocks of time the first couple weeks of January that you'd be available and I can start to schedule those meetings um, with our departments. So whenever you get a chance, just shoot me, you know, a couple of different blocks of time within the first few weeks of January that you would be available. And um, we'll look to, to get those on the, on the books. And then as soon as I get all of the budgets in, I'll start making, sending out those emails, providing you with all that information and um, making the connections. That'd be okay. great. Any cool. any feedback from the department heads? Uh, like they're yeah, going to be yeah. late, they're going to be on time, they're not going to do it at all? <laughs> um, well, I can tell you that um, as I kind of enforced last year, I've told everyone deadlines are deadlines. If I don't have your budget by the deadline, I will be submitting your budget for you. Nobody wants me to submit their budget. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, Very uh, but, um, no, I, I, we've actually gotten in quite a few already. Uh, everyone's doing a really good job. I, I think it really helps that we did this at the 10% exercise last year too, because mm -hmm. going into this year, uh, most of our departments are, are pretty comfortable with it. And um, the budgets that we've gotten in so far, actually they've, Everyone's done a really good job um, cool. with it. So. Okay. Very good. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay. With that, um, if there is nothing else, I have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mike. Roll call vote, Cheryl? Yes. Mike Bennett? Yes. yes. Frank? Yes, to adjourn the meeting, please. EJ? Yes, sir. Bill? Yes. Mr. Rignetto? Rignetto? Yes, sir. And I'm a yes as well. So the meeting is adjourned. It is 648. So thank you all again for your flexibility. And thank you for joining. And we'll see you on the 16th. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.